Here's the story from Mr. Allah. It's such a simple story. It can be told in 30 seconds. And that is, for a generation that's grown up and empowered to create their own information and share it in open comments around the world, why not empower a younger generation to begin generating their own green energy, storing it in hydrogen, and sharing it across entire continents to create a sustainable green future that can mitigate climate change and maybe save this planet? That's 30 seconds to tell that story. And perhaps the problem here is the old politics versus the new. I'm going to step on one last topic. And I noticed here on the rollout of this third industrial revolution, it's not liberal conservative. While Chancellor Merkel, my advisor, is ahead of the game on all five pillars, she's center right. President Sabatero, I advise him, he's a socialist. Alamano, the mayor of Rome, is a former fascist right wing party. Papa Dre and is the head of the Socialist International. Here's what I started to figure out. This new politics is not right left. It's generational. It depends on a new spectrum as to whether you think patriarchal, centralized, bureaucratic, top-down, proprietary, or whether we think open, transparent, distributed, collaborative. This shift to a new communication energy regime is a shift from hierarchical power to lateral power. <coughs> lateral power is going to transform the world in the 21st century, and right at the center is the men and women in this room. This is a legacy for us, and especially you. Because to the extent that you can help us move this storage and the infrastructure, we will succeed. All across, from the lamps out in our highways to our bridges, hydrogen has to be in all the infrastructure embedded to go together with Pillar 1 and Pillar 2. They're seamless. That's millions of jobs and thousands of new business opportunities. Pillar 1, we know advantages. 20% of 30 electricity. Pillar 2, we convert the entire infrastructure and real estate structure of the planet into micro power plants. Pillar 3, we put in hydrogen across every single part of that infrastructure to store it so we have a reliable asset on peak and base load. You with me? Pillar 4 is where the communication revolution converges with the energy revolution. We use off the shelf internet technology. And we take the transmission lines and power grid of Europe and we convert them at a cost of one trillion, we need one trillion in the next 11 years, we convert them to an intergrid that acts exactly like the internet with internet off the shelf technology. So that when millions and millions of buildings are collecting their energy on site, storing it in hydrogen like we store media in digital, and then any surplus we don't need, the software directs it across the entire continent, 27 member states, from the Irish Sea to the doorsteps of Russia. And lest we discount the EU, let me just say, when we talk about G20, G8, G2, the European Union is the leading economy in the world. I know a lot of us think it's a place we go because it's an interesting New Zealand. Not true. The GDP of the 27 member states of the European Union exceeds the GDP of the 50 states of the United States of America right now. 500 million people and another 500 million in our associated regions. If we create a seamless transport power and energy grid across the billion person market with renewables, building infrastructure converted to power plants, hydrogen as a storage vehicle like digital, internet connection, then we go to pillar five. We need logistical seamless infrastructure. That's transport. Electric plug-in vehicles are out here right now. Hydrogen vehicles are going to be out in three years. We've had the hydrogen buses operating in Europe for a number of years now. We know the technology works, as Charlie says. Now we need scale-up, no more pilots. We're tired of pilots. We need scale-up. It needs to be lateral. And so if we plug in, we can create a post-carbon logistics across continents. What are distributed energies? They're energies that are found in every square foot of the ocean and land on this planet in some frequency or proportion. The sun shines all over the world every day. 40 minutes is enough energy to move the entire world come. The wind blows all over this planet every day, at least 20% of it. We've got enough energy to kingdom comes. We have a hot geothermal core under this earth, enough energy to move our species until the infinite future. 
We have garbage from anaerobic digestion that can be recycled back to energy. If we live in the rural areas, we have agricultural and foresty ways. We have small hydro everywhere there's water. On the ocean coast, where our urban populations live, we have the ocean tides and those waves coming in every day. My God, how much energy do we need? So, pillar one, renewables. Pillar two, we convert the infrastructure of the world to micro power plants. Then, pillar three, this was the one that was the tough one. How do we store this energy? The sun isn't always shining. The wind isn't always blowing. Sometimes it's blowing when we don't need it. These are intermittent energies. We need some form of storage. They're putting wind in California. Alan Roy's on my team. He used to be the EPA director there. Put in the wind. We're not getting it when we need it. We're losing three out of every four kilowatts. Under Manuel Barroso, we just introduced an eight billion public-private joint technology initiative for hydrogen. I'm in favor of all storage. Water pump, flywheels, batteries, capacitors. Use them all. The reason I like hydrogen as a centerpiece, it's completely universal, it's modular, it's convertible, it's the basic element of the universe, it's the lightest element in existence, it's the stuff of the stars. And when you use it as a carrier for power, the only byproduct is water and heat. As you mentioned earlier in your opening talk, Charlie, the astronauts, I think the astronauts have been using high tech hydrogen fuel cells for 30 years to power their ships. Time to bring it down to the United States of America. So, when the sun hits your roof, the wind hits the wall, generate the electricity. If you have some surplus you don't need, electrolyzed water, high school chemistry, hydrogen comes out of the fuel cell, when the sun's not shining, convert it back. Yes, it's an energy loss. But that's the second law of thermodynamics. Whenever we convert energy, we lose energy in the process. This energy loss at end site is infinitesimally small compared to the loss conversion in getting oil, coal, gas, and uranium to you. It isn't even close. We're going to have to have hydrogen, modular hydrogen, in every part of the infrastructure in the world. I'm talking about every building that's converted to renewables has to have hydrogen in it. That second industrial revolution, the energies are sunsetting, coal, oil, gas, and uranium, those prices are never going down again, they're just going up. The technologies based on those energies, like the internal combustion engine, are shot. There is no, nothing left in the S curve. The infrastructure based on these energies is clearly dying. You can see it all around us. We are on the cusp of the third industrial revolution. And it's the men and women in this room that are going to be one of the five linchpin pillars of this revolution and critical to it because it's always about energy, communication, and storage and logistics. Five pillar infrastructure, third industrial revolution. It answers a question we couldn't answer for 30 years. For 30 years, governments would say to me, Mr. Rifkin, how do we operate? A world economy on windmills and solar roofs and garbage. Please, please. I mean, enough. We like these energies. They're good. They're going to have a place. They're soft. We need coal, oil, gas, uranium, tar sands, heavy oil, because they're hard energy. They're a reliable asset. We couldn't answer this question until 10 years ago. Now we got the answer for table. When scientists in Silicon Valley figured out how to introduce software, that could connect hundreds of thousands of little desktop computers connected. When they connected those hundreds of thousands of little computers, the distributed collaborative power, the lateral power, exceeded by a magnitude of anything you could do with a centralized supercomputer. We can take this grid IT, which is the cutting edge of IT now, to the power lines. When millions and millions of buildings are collecting energy, storing it in hydrogen, and sharing it across continents, on smart distributed grid IT, the power generated towards anything you can imagine with nuclear coal fired power plants. We are at a moment with a vast opportunity. We actually have the technology for a new energy regime converging with a new communication regime. We have a game plan of five pillar infrastructure that can get us there. We can move post carbon, we can create millions of jobs, but now, as Charlie said, we have to focus with commitment. We need to bring all of our forces together at the regional, state, and federal level now. Not in six months from now, not in a year. The companies, the industries, 